What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Trey B. Dippin, in the building. You know what time it is. So, uh, I don't know what part this is. I think this is, I, I wouldn't count the last video of me painting the block. I don't think that's technically a part as far as the engine building goes. But, um, nevertheless, this video definitely is. So this video, um, I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to be going over how to install your clutch. And also, I'm going to be kind of doing an unboxing slash review of the clutch that I have. So, stay tuned. Alright, so, I'm not going to lie to you guys, man. I spent quite a bit on this build. And it's getting kind of uh, on the expensive side. So, being that I had deadlines that I'm trying to meet, number one, I'm trying to make sure that I make Honda Day, you know what I'm saying, so I can get me another one of these. If you guys haven't seen that video, go back, it's uh, how to win first place at Honda Day. I'm not bragging, I'm, I was honestly surprised that I won, but I do, you know how they, that saying, anybody can hit it once, but can you hit it twice? I got to see if I can hit it twice, man, so. Oh, the clutch. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know how I got that far off topic. The clutch. I spent a lot of money. So the point that I'm at right now, and I'm sorry if this is a little loud, I just got AC put into the shop, and I'm loving it, bro. But I don't know if this is going to be loud on camera or not. So I'm going to talk a little bit louder. But anyway, um, man, the lighting sucks in here, too. I got to get some more lights. Um, so the clutch that I have, I wanted to spend bare minimum to meet my deadlines that's where I was going with that in order to meet my deadlines financially I had to go with what I could get um, of course the cheapest option would have been to throw a stock clutch on there now I'm not gonna lie my stock clutch held 400 horsepower easy so I don't know but I figured for my power goals that I'm going for now definitely wasn't gonna cut it so I went with the um, EX stage 4 clutch Amazon um, it was about $180 with the flywheel and I'm gonna um, show you guys everything that came in the box and that's what I'm going with for now I'm gonna I'm I'm do this so I can get tuned and make it a holiday and probably uh, once winter actually hits I probably save up you know and get a get an actual clutch, uh, actual clutch like a competition or maybe a, even a twin disc I don't know we'll see but for now I'm going with this so if you guys out there that are turbo or boosted or kind of wondering about these, I'm going to definitely put some, some time in on this clutch. So eventually I'll do a full review on this as well. So that you guys, if you're wondering, you know, the performance wise and how much horsepower and all that stuff, I'll have all that, you know what I'm saying, in another video. But yeah, let's get to it. All right, so when you open the box, the kit that I got, came with the it's supposed to be an 11 pound flywheel I guess it's supposed to be a little lighter than the original um, or the OEM spec I guess this is obviously the pressure plate and then this here is the clutch six puck clutch so oh it also comes with the oh, where is it oh here we go throw out bearing and I just oh and the clutch tool make sure you get it straight alright so for reference, this is the OEM flywheel. I wasn't sure how much lighter it was until I actually picked this one up and then picked the other one up. But yeah, this is the OEM flywheel. Um, nothing wrong with it. It was working perfectly fine. So if you need a flywheel, oh, you know, it's a good opportunity. If you need a flywheel and a clutch, OEM style clutch or OEM grade clutch, let me know. This one has more than enough life on it. I mean, it's pretty much brand new in this uh, OEM clutch and pressure plate. It's pretty much brand new. So these two and the flywheel, if you need it, comment below and um, I'll sell it to you, man. I don't need it. Um, it's, it's in perfect working condition. But back to the point, this bad boy right here is pretty heavy in comparison to the new flywheel. So, if this thing will focus, this is the new flywheel, lightweight. Alright, so for whatever reason, I'm not sure, the hole 
on this that will fit the nub on the crank was just slightly, slightly smaller. Um, I just kind of drilled it out just ever so slightly. So now it goes on just fine. Um, so moving forward, when you line the flywheel up to the notch, um, what you're gonna wanna do is, well actually what you're gonna need is a 12.17 millimeter socket. Um, that's gonna be different than your average 17 mil. It's gonna have twice as many teeth, and that's the only way you're gonna be able to do it because the nuts or the bolts for the, uh, I don't know why this thing won't focus, but the, the nuts on for the flywheel are 12 point. So you're gonna need a 12.17 millimeter. And basically, it's uh, pretty much as simple as lining it up and putting the bolts on. I recommend putting uh, all the bolts in by hand first. All right, so once you get everything um, put on by hand, this is where my method versus other people's method is probably gonna be different. Now, of course, the manual is gonna tell you, oh, torque it to such and such pounds, torque, blah, blah, blah. I've done this enough times to be able to tell you without issues that if you take your impact to these, as long as you do it in the correct sequence, you should be good. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you not to do it the correct way because obviously if you want to do that, then do that. But um, you're gonna need a lot more, you're gonna need something to keep this still. And it's just it's, it's a lot of extra unnecessary work if you ask me, it's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying my personal opinion is right, but hey. So with that being said, you know, so if you saw how I kind of went in a uh, kind of like a star pattern, so you start at one end, other kind of like you do your, your lug nuts when you kind of. You never go around in a circle. You always go across, like, like a cross X pattern to make sure that it goes on evenly. I would actually wipe the surface down um, that is gonna be making contact with the clutch because you might, you might have put grease on or whatever. So just make sure you clean that off. Um, I'm, I'm gonna use brake cleaner. Um, you can use brake cleaner or whatever cleaning solution, maybe some alcohol. I'm just gonna use brake cleaner, that's what I have. So after you wipe the surface down, you're gonna to wanna to grab your clutch and your clutch alignment tool. So put the clutch alignment tool, the spline should line up perfectly. And then you're gonna to wanna to put the other end, make sure it's nice and snug. You can give it a little tap if you want. Make sure it's on there good. And this is gonna keep your clutch aligned. And then, you're gonna to wanna to put your pressure plate on. Now, similar to when you put the flywheel on, you're gonna to wanna to, uh, have a 10 millimeter 12 point for the actual clutch screws.
All right. So, uh, <clears throat> I, made a, I might have made, made that look easy. For those of you who have ever tried to put a transmission on by yourself, you know that it typically never goes on that easy. Um, one, one tip that I can give you that would definitely help is um, when you take off the transmission, there are two little dowel pins on each side. And the dowel pins really, really, I mean, they really make it hard to get the transmission back on. Because you're already trying to rotate, and that last little bit that you need to clamp it together, if the dowel pins aren't uh, on the trans uh, perfectly, then you have about an inch and a half worth of space that you have to fight to get it on. So, personally, I take the dowel pins out. That way, it's easier for me to get the transmission on. I can literally rotate it on the splines until it gets perfectly where I need it to go. Um, so that's a tip that can help you get it on a lot faster. Um, but the main thing is like experience. Once you do it a few times, it's pretty easy. Um, so pretty much from, from here on out, um, it's a bunch of miscellaneous things that that need to go on the motor that I'm probably not going to bother with. Um, this, at this at this point, I I have content on anything else like I have a, I have a video about the intake manifold already so stuff like that I'm not going to show you again um, if you're new to the channel I do have tons I mean literally tons of how-to videos on this motor uh, which is also pretty much the same thing as the H22 um, and it kind of uh, is relevant to all the Honda motors in some type of way just go go to click videos and just scroll down and see I, I have tons of videos man so uh, with that being said, um, this motor is pretty much almost assembled, man. So I want to say within the next couple of days, within the next couple of days, my plan is to take the motor. I was going to bring and have my car towed here to the shop, but it makes more sense for me to just take the motor back down to my house and, and just put the motor back in the car at the house. So... If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. And uh, if you're new, you see that right there? Yeah, that's the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that, and I'll see you guys on the next one. The grand opening. I come through and start smoking shit. I'm creeping up while I'm approaching.